Boston Bruins have rookie Bobby Orr along with veterans John Busick, Murray Oliver, and Ron Stewart. The Leafs have 10 future Hall of Famers in the lineup, including Alan Stanley, Bob Pulford, and Dave Keon. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Joe Bowen, and welcome to Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. The Maple Leafs are clean to the fourth and final playoff spot as we start February 18, 1967. They have 47 points, just two ahead of the Detroit Red Wings. Coach and general manager Punch Imlach has been hospitalized, admitted there for exhaustion. Dusting off his old coach's hat is King Clancy, who will be behind the bench. The Bruins are once again the doormats of the National Hockey League, but you can see that the future is bright, especially with the addition of the young Perry Sound Flash, Bobby Orr. The guardians of the Gilded Gazebos tonight are Ed Johnston for the Boston Bruins and the China Wall, Johnny Bauer, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Because it's February the 18th, 1967, the Bruins are in town. And this is Molson Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. The Boston Bruins have trouble scoring goals this season. They have just one 20-goal score in their midst, and it's Pitt Martin. Orr, however, will register 13 and 41 points in his rookie season. The Maple Leafs are a veteran team with nine players who will score in double figures, but they make their mark with team defense and solid goalkeeping from John Bauer and Terry Sawchuk. Mike Shakey Walton left Kirkland Lake for a hockey career in Toronto, starring for the St. Michael's Majors, Neil McNeil Maroons, and Toronto Marlboros, going to the Memorial Cup. Six seasons in Toronto followed, including the Stanley Cup run in 1967. Walton was traded to Philadelphia in February of 1971, but never played a game in a flyer uniform, as he was dealt the very same day to Boston. With the Bruins, he won another cup in 1972. In 588 NHL games, Walton scored 201 goals and not one of them, not one of them, was without going underneath that bar, getting it upstairs, bringing people right out of their seats, going end to end to score every one of them. They're a highlight reel. <laughs> I loved, I loved shooting high. The only guys I didn't really like was the guys I was standing in front of the net and trying to tip them in. <laughs> I got a lot of criticism about that, but uh, I did love shooting high. Michael, it's good to have you with us here on uh, Leap Classics. And uh, this is a situation in February of 1967. This older team has gone through 10 straight losses, and it has cost uh, your coach and general manager, Punch Imlach, his health. He has been hospitalized with exhaustion. And King Clancy has dusted off the coaching reins in the old fedora and is stepping behind the bench. Now, first off, uh, who uh, organized the bus excursion to go up and visit him, Mark? Well, I think we're all thankful that he was there. No, I just <laughs> no, I, I should, no, I was, uh, it, Punch was a, you know, in all fairness, Punch was a great coach. And he got a lot of the players that he had. The guys were getting up in age, but he got every possible play out of them and and uh and but it was tough he was tough on everybody and when king came in to coach it was sort of like a every a weight off the back because he was joking he kidded everybody he was laughing it was just tension wasn't there it was king and, 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 and that was that, his that, making that, that was yeah. what he w was supposed to do and um <clears throat> he was great and um the players started playing and uh we started playing and we went on and on and on and we and it snowballed but it was just that lighter feeling. Now, uh, on the <coughs> other uh, bench is a young whippersnapper <coughs> from Perry Sound who has <coughs> torn up the uh, OHL and uh, played with the Oshawa Generals and gone to the Memorial Cup. And the Boston Bruins have him uh, as their shining light of the future on a team that in this era, in the uh, mid to early, uh, early 60s, was an abysmal hockey team. But this kid, you can see in his rookie year, the only year he ever played in the original six, that he was something special. Well, it's, it's, it's great looking at the, at the game. And I think the, uh, the people that watch it are going to get a real real treat because um, it just showed how it, this, I watched and, and, and to see him out there you just could see how great he really was and later on and I happened to uh, play on the same team as him so even saw more of him than just the odd time when we played him when I was playing for Toronto and the guy was just so good it, it was unbelievable and you can see it in this game and he just he could go and he could skate and he and no one could skate and there was some great hockey guys that could fly and the Cronoyers, uh, the Fleurs, um, but this guy was unbelievable. His, and, and you talk about his skating and his lateral movement and his, uh, his vision of the ice 
and uh, things of that nature is really what put him head and shoulders above everyone else. Because, as you mentioned, straightaway speed, lots of guys could do that. Yeah. But the way Orr could move yeah. laterally was unbelievable. Yeah, he, he had everything. And, and he, he really had the sense that, uh, that makes great hockey players or any great athletes. He could see things happen before it happened. And that's what made him so great. He anticipated the play so well. He went into the hole. He went there back and forth. He was, he was unbelievable. And in an era that is really... Uh, rushing defenseman. <laughs> he changed everything. I yeah. mean, he changed. Um, you know, he started the ones from carrying the puck, and he used to take it and go. And then when you thought you'd had him, he put that extra, it's like a, a gear shift in the car. He put it in the second, in the third, in the fourth, and he was gone. And he was he was great. All right. Well, the Maple Leafs have uh, their work cut out for them, and they've got to keep an eye on a young kid named Bobby Orr because we're taking you back to February 18th, 1967. Maple Leafs and the Bruins at Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. So at the end of the first period, it is two to one in favor of the Boston Bruins. Let's go back now and relive those goals with Bill Hewitt. On the faceoff, Armstrong, number 10, fans on it, has it in his skates, loses it to Pitt Martin. There's a shot, the puck is gone! Tommy Williams now for the Bruins. Coming from the side, it's right in front of the net, a back in Get in by the Leafs. Walton getting in front. Here's the shot. Another shot. Right in front. And so with the Leafs trailing two to one, let's go back upstairs now to the gondola in the second period. Here's Bill Hewitt. He has just started here in the second period. The puck is down the Boston zone. They're shorthanded, playing six men to five. Here's right in front of the net. The Hopper flicks at it, and he didn't flick it very hard, and Ed Johnson came out of the net to cover up. There's 49 seconds left in Wojtowicz's penalty. Boston leads by a score of two to one. Boston Bruins two, Toronto Maple Leafs one. Martin, Williams, and Walton have been the goal scorers in this game so far. Boston outshot the Leafs 12-9 in the first period. From the faceoff, Kelly. Trying to get away. Tried to flip it for Walton. Walton moved up, did keep it in. Took a backhand. The Hoblitz had it off the end of his stick. It's cleared to Westfall, and Westfall shoots it down the ice. Walton back for it, number 16 for the Leafs. 23 seconds left in the penalty. Walton feeds Mahavlich. Down the left wing. Fakes a shot, stops. Closing in. Right to Walton, he shot it wide. The rebound to Stewart, and he shoots it down the ice. Hillman going back for it. Wojtowicz has one second left in his penalty. Ellis right off Kelly's skate. Now then, Wojtowicz is on the ice. Ellis took the puck away from Westfall. Ellis going down the right side. Shot the puck into the Boston zone, but it'll be called for icing as he had done so from his own side of center. Brian? Well, here's something from the out-of-town scoreboard uh, first, Bill. Uh, Detroit won, Montreal won. In the game this afternoon, it was uh, New York 4, Chicago 1, and that ended the 15-game unbeaten streak of the Chicago Blackhawks. And, of course, it's 2-1 here for the Boston Bruins over the Toronto Maple Leafs. 18-39 remaining in the second period. On the face-off, Conacher coming out with Horton and Keon. Keon with Horton over the line. Horton goes into the corner, tried the center, it fell, and Bobby Orr feeds it right into Armstrong. Off his stick to Orr, Orr for Williams, and Conacher get back to cover up. He just gets rid of it to center ice. Bobby Orr's long shot, Bauer knocked to the wing. Break of Boston, number 21 is covered. Alan Stanley behind the leaf net. Pass up to Keon. Over for Conacher. A backhand deflected by Johnson into the corner, and Watson has it now for... The Bruins. Joe Watson, number 14. 
Up to Tommy Williams, number 11. Out at center ice, and it's back to Stanley for Connick, who lets it go to Armstrong. He flipped it over the line. Keon just failed to get loose. Conacher losing possession. Johnny Busick comes over the leaf line, tries to go through the defense, does. And he fell right over top of Bauer. Bauer got hurt on the head. That one caught Johnny Bauer on the head. We're going to look at it again, Bill. You'll see Busick break right in on uh, Bauer here in a moment. He goes right through the leaf defense. Bauer slides out. Now watch closely, and you'll see Bauer go down and hold his head as the leaf clear the puck. And John is obviously going to be a little groggy, and we'll see if Perry Sawchuk, who is the standby goaltender, will take over in goal. There's the stop action camera of the play as Busick goes over top of Johnny Bauer. Bauer says he's all right, and he's going to continue in goal for Toronto. Fortunately, Brian, that appeared to be, as you could see by the stop action, that it was a glancing blow, and I think perhaps it could have hurt a lot more had he had his head jammed onto the ice, but he was very fortunate that he was able to get it out of there. King Clancy naturally does not want to put Sachuk in tonight unless he can help it. He still needs four or five days to get back in top shape, and they plan to start him against Detroit in a few days uh, in, in the next outing against Detroit. I'd like to keep going with John Bauer. From the faceoff, the puck is in the corner. That's Bob Pulford, number 20. Around on the boards to Jim Pappen. Up to Peter Stamkowski at center, and he's checked. Pulford tried to get loose. Busick clears the puck back into the Leafs zone. The Leafs in their dark blue uniforms. Bruins in their gold, black, and white. Pulford to Stamkowski. A long shot. Ed Johnson steered it into the corner. Pulford moves up. Kept it in. Joe Watson, number 14 of the Bruins. Around on the boards it goes to Tommy Williams. He fails to get it out. Marcel Pronovo's shot is wide. Hits the mesh. Bounces off. Happen was trying to center it. And it's Craig of the Bruins getting it out over the blue line. Pronovo just shot it right to Watson of the Bruins. Over to Orr, ahead to Williams. Craig, number 21. Back to Williams, right in front for Busick, and he just failed to get it. Joe Watson is shot. Bauer stopped that. The rebound was wide. Right in front for Williams for Busick. There's the shot, and Bauer covers up outside the goal tree. At 11 seconds of the second period, Montreal have taken a two-to-one lead. LaRose from Baxter and J.C. Tremblay. On the face-off, Puck is cleared into the corner. Bob Dillabo, a backhand, comes back to Joe Murat. Off the boards, into the corner. Alan Stanley, number 26, to Frank Mahavlich. He just let it go, then gets it up for Kelly. Ellis races after it. Ellis into the corner, centered it right in front, goes after it again on the rebound. Back to Horton. Horton for Ellis, and it's stopped by Dillabo, and Horton is chased back at center ice. To Kelly, shooting it into the Boston zone. Murat, number 10. He's given a jolt by Mahavlich. It's cleared to the blue line. Stanley shot it. Finally, at least, it's cleared out by McKenzie, number 19 for the Bruins. Now then, the Leafs over the line. Mahavlich is checked. McKenzie to Pitt Martin. Over the blue line. And Kelly intercepts the pass. Back to Mahavlich. With Ellis. Over the blue line, Mahavlich back for Ellis, and Ellis comes up. Bob Dillabo, number 22, Kenzie on his right. Dillabo to the leaf line. He ran into Stanley, who was knocked flat. Tim Horton comes back. Went by Kelly, and it's Joe Morant picking it off. Dillabo. Number 22 at center. Over the line, stopped by Horton to Keon. Keon gets over the line, closing in. Tried to center it, kicked it with his skeet. Comes to the blue line and out. Armstrong to Horton. Horton a long shot, caught by Johnson. Marat, covered by Keon. 
Martin goes to the boards with Murad and they hold it for a face-off. Fourteen twenty-five remaining in the second period and a face-off in the Boston zone to the left. That's Ron Schock, number 23. Bobby Orr is number four. Number 25 is Gary Doak. Here's a chance for Hillman, a shot. He hit Bobby Orr right on the ankle. Hillman keeps it in to Keon. Keon right in front of that side. And go! Watching on the instant playback as the lead captain gets the goal here. Bounces off one Bruin. Now, Hillman is up quickly to hold it in. And here's the pass to Armstrong and a great shot right to the corner. It's by Eddie Johnson, and we have a tie hockey game. Toronto 2, Boston 2. George Armstrong, sixth goal of the year. Toronto goal, scored by number 10, Armstrong. Assist, number 14, Keon. And number 2, Hillman. Time, 5.46. 5.46, and as you saw there, the score is tied 2-2. Here's Keon coming back again over the line with Conacher offside. 14.08 remaining in this second period. The score is tied 2-2. Shock at center ice for the Bruins. Number 26 is Bill Goldsworthy. And number 28, of course, is Ron Murphy. Here's Ron Schock getting the puck into the lead zone with a backhand across the goal mouth. Murphy trying to get his shot. Play is called, and there's going to be penalties here. Roseworthy and Conacher. They had a private set to well outside the uh, play, which you didn't see. And... While the play was on the other side of the rink, Goldsworthy seemed to break his stick, but the two of them are going to get penalties. Conacher as well. Conacher and Goldsworthy. The play has roughened up just a bit in the second period. The Leafs started off slowly. They weren't skating or checking or throwing their weight around in the first five or ten minutes of the hockey game. That's one reason they got behind especially in front of their own zone. It's been a fault uh, well, for the past several weeks, but uh, not knocking that man down. 26, Goldsworthy. Two minutes for side. Toronto penalty to number 22, Conacher. Two minutes for side. The time, 6.08. 6.08 is the time. Double slashing penalties. And the Goldsworthy is still talking to Conacher from long range down in the penalty box. Larry Hillman, a long pass up for Kelly. The teams are even, five aside. Here's Kelly getting a break. Over the line, he takes his shot, and Johnson covered up. Ron Schock trying to get out for the Bruins. A pass over to Joe Watson, number 14. Kelly checked him. Kelly for Marcel Pronovo. Off Kelly again. Gary Duke goes back for it for the Bruins. Tries to pull away from Kelly, does, and goes behind the net. Doak coming out. A backhand at center ice, intercepted by Marcel Tonovo. Mahovlich tried to get loose and couldn't. Larry Hillman to fight Mahovlich. Mike Walton is out there now on the forward line, replacing Kelly. Up to center ice for Murphy, a long shot. That's way wide. Mike Mahovlich for Mike Walton. He failed to get away or a shot wide. Larry Hillman up to Frank Mahavlich with Walton. Takes the pass over the line. Takes the shot. Back up the ice for Orr at center. Up to the leaf line. Gets away from Turnable. Gets his shot. Bauer stops it. Another shot. Another drive. And Bauer covers up. Play is called. There's no red light on yet. Let's look at it again, Bill, as Bobby Orr makes a couple of brilliant moves here. Gets by one man. Now, I think he hits the post in this rebound, and he hits Bauer. Orr is down. They pile in front. The puck probably went in under there after the whistle, and Bauer gets up mad. Now we're having quite a discussion behind the goal. 
as the Leafs are back there. Art Scove is back talking to the goal judge, and there's the stop action of that puck in the air, and watch Bobby Orr come in and bat it off the goal post, and then run right into Johnny Bauer. There will be no goal on the play. Number four is Bobby Orr, and the puck comes down in there somewhere on the slow motion playback. I the think, uh, Brian, you'll find that the puck was in the skate of Johnny Bowers, and when they, just as the whistle blew, he was knocked into the net with the puck. Bowers had a rough outing so far. They've been banging him around there. First Busick, and then Orr, and there's a look at Bobby Orr. Boy, he's having a great freshman season. He'll be 19 years old next month. Alan Stanley has a birthday next month, but uh, there's about <laughs> a 20-year difference in... Uh, in spread of age there. Well, nobody could ever accuse Bobby Orr of not being persistent on that play because he did everything but take it in the net with him. Now it's Stanley. For Horton intercepted by Dizik, who seemed to go off balance at the last second when he may have had a breakaway. Stanley to Keon. The teams are playing even, five aside. Horton Armstrong for Keon. Keon decides to turn in his own blue line. Up at center, having difficulty controlling it. Back to Stanley. For Keon, and Murat is there. Bill Murat, up over the leaf line. A pass for Bissick to Goldsworthy. Covered by Horton and Armstrong. Gives it to Conacher, but there's going to be a penalty here. Number seven, Tim Horton is coming to the penalty box for holding Art Scove is keeping a very tight eye on things now, dishing out the penalties. But he doesn't want this game to get out of hand. Number seven, Hart. Two minutes for hold. Time, 8.17. Faceoff is in the circle of the lap. The referee, as Brian has mentioned, Art Scove, wearing sweater number three with a red armband above his left elbow. And the two linesmen are number seven, Matt Pavlich, and Brent Castleman, number 20. We mentioned earlier, of course, that Punch Imlach is at home watching this game tonight, if he's well enough to. Punch was sick today, and at the last minute uh, found he couldn't get down to the rink, so King Clancy is behind the leaf bench. A face-off will be in the circle to the left of Johnny Bauer. The score is tied 2-2. Boston 2, Toronto Maple Leafs 2. Martin in the penalty box. The Bruins with a man advantage. Break off the boards. Ellis gets it out. This is accurate. Bobby Orr gets back quickly. And Bobby Orr can really move. Now Orr leading a four-man rush. Up the center ice and clearing it in was number 21. Skip Creek. Creek tried to hold it. Williams gets it loose. Marcel Cotto doesn't get it out. Orr lets one go. That's why. Williams back to Orr again. That's his shot go. He scores! A deflected shot and Hillman tried to grab it with his glove. Face off. Martin shoots it down the ice. Teams are at full strength. And that means the face off back in the Boston zone to the left. That means, Brian, that the Bruins now have scored all three goals while they've had a man advantage. Not only that, Bill, but Bobby Orr now has 29 points, more points than all but two players on his own club and more than all but three on the Leafs. And they face off. Three to two, the score in favor of Boston. Horton for Eddie Shack, Slipping it down the ice. It's Walton out there with Conacher and Shaq. Pitt Martin 
Donnie McKenzie and Bob Dillabo. Horton trying to come out. A pass to Conacher. To Shaq. And Shaq couldn't get loose. Horton for Shaq again. Dillabo missed it. Conacher tried to feed Shaq. Dillabo over the line again. Cleared it right in front of the net. Shaq right on a Martin stick. It comes back to the blue line. Woodowitz shot was stopped by Stanley. For Eddie Shaq to Mike Walton. Walton over the line. A pass right to Conacher. See the goal! Here it is on the instant playback now. As the Leafs once again tie it up, getting the puck up the ice. Here's Walton with it, going in over the Bruin line. There's the pass and the good shot that gets in behind Johnson, and we have a 3-3 hockey game. Brian Conacher. That's his 12th goal of the season. Toronto goal, scored by number 22, Conacher. Assist number 16, Walton. And number 23, Shaq. The time, 10-11. 10-11 is the time of the goal. Conacher, Walton, and Shaq. Mahavich covers Dolt. That's from trying to center it. There's going to be a penalty to the Leafs for holding. And this has been their downfall tonight as the Bruins have scored three times so far while they've had a man advantage. And now they get the chance again. The fifth penalty of the Maple Leafs, Brian, in this uh, hockey game so far. They picked up two in the first period. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Mike Walton sets up Brian Conacher, and the Leafs have a 3-3 tie in the second period midway through. George Armstrong has scored his sixth goal, and uh, here's an individual, a long-time standing Maple Leaf, and uh, the longest tenure as far as a captain is concerned. Um, the Chief was a different sort, and, uh, and obviously under the situation with Emlak, really wasn't so much of a guy to be the liaison between Emlak and the players, because there wasn't any. But as far as the captain and the crew and, and, the, and the, the, the teammates and everything else, what was he like? He was a great guy, and uh, he was all, always good to me. But it was tough being a captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, uh, back in those days because, I mean, the captain was supposed to be uh, the go-between guy between the players and the management. And back then, George really couldn't go to, to punch or whoever and say, listen, uh, Walton's having a hard time or Frank's having a hard time and this and that. It just wasn't done in those days. But he was a first-class guy and a great hockey player and a great captain. And uh, off the ice, uh, a character. He was quite a character. Uh, he and John Bauer, it's legendary. It's almost like well, watching Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. I, don't, I think this is a family show, but I'll tell you a <laughs> quick story. What my introduction, one of my first introductions to George Armstrong was I was, we were in the shower back in those days, and today they have like 10, 15 stalls and all this kind of stuff. And but back in our days in the old uh, Maple Leaf Gardens, that basically there was room for maybe three guys in the shower. So I was in there as a rookie and all that, and I was, you know, George was talking to me, and I was all excited because George Armstrong, captain, talking to me. I was just a rookie, and all of a sudden I felt this warm <laughs> feeling on 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 my, on my leg, and I looked down, and I, you know what it was? It was just, he was initiating me into the team. I said, "Oh my God, oh my God!" It was unbelievable. And but he did crazy things. He took at a training camp. We took John Bauer who throws nickels around like manhole covers and basically took his car he just bought. We all play in golf. And he took his car and he had it painted with that wash away paint. And Bauer came home. We had a banquet afterwards and this and that. And, and they, they took, someone was dro drove by Johnny's car by and Johnny had tears in his eyes because he had painted it. <laughs> Didn't know the paint would come off by and a wash. colors too, I All, all kinds, multiple. It was just <laughs> things like that. So George was, you know, I could go on with some great stories, but he's a great guy. All right. So the Maple Leafs and the uh, Boston Bruins are tied. Let's go back now to Bill Hewitt. And they picked up three penalties here in this second period. And they face off. Murphy to Orr. Craig coming up with Busick and Williams. A long shot. Bauer had it deflect off this pad. Kept in by Murphy. 
It goes to Busick, a shot, and that went by the corner. Comes back to Orr. There's the shot. Another try. Bauer stopped it. Kelly goes to the board. Stanley picks it up. Shot it around for Horton. Horton off Ellis. Ellis gets up over the line. And his pass for Kelly just there to play. Williams to Craig. Back for Williams. Stopped by Ellis. And it goes all over the blue line. 8.45 remaining in the second period. Score is tied, 3-3. Kelly back. Behind the net, Busick tried to steal it. Ellis. Around for Stanley. Stanley shoots it down the ice, and Kelly is being replaced. Conacher and Pulford come out. Now here's Bobby Orr coming up for the Bruins. Up the center. To the line. He's hit. It's Pulford getting a break now and coming in back. Over the line. Pulford closing in. Takes his shot. And Jackson made the save. Nice play by Bob Pulford. And a good save by Ed Johnson. Now the Bruins over the line. Pitt Martin. Right to McKenzie. Oh, that shot hit the side of the net. Martin from behind the goal gets out in front and gets the shot. Here's McKenzie with a shot. Right in front of the net. Bauer is stopped down and holds it out. Let's take another look at that one as Pitt Martin is all around that Maple Leaf cage. Watch him go in behind, moves right in front. Bauer makes that save. Then the pass back and again Martin takes a shot and Bauer again falls on the loose puck. We have a face off to the left of Johnny Bauer. He's going to be having a busy time. Faceoff is in the lead zone to the left. Boblich has five seconds remaining in his penalty. Armstrong. Out over the blue line, given a shove by Martin. Gets it ahead for Keon. Keon puts it loose in the hobble. Turn it and go. And a stop. Stop by Johnson. Ed Johnson right off the Permahovlitz. He's turning it right in front. Hellman trying to get in the Bruins. they got a three-man break. One man back. Over the line for Dillabo. He's having trouble. Martin moves in. And he's checked by Hellman, who came from nowhere. A pass for Mahovlitz. Orr breaks it up right in front. And Martin shot hit a leg. Armstrong behind the net to Larry Hellman. Up for Mahovlitz. To Keon. They're over the line. Keon shut one. Armstrong the rebound. And he just missed the corner. Marcel Pronovo for Mahovlic. Back to Marcel Pronovo a shot. Knocked down by Bobby Orr. Orr a four-man rush. There's, he fakes a shot. Then lets it go. Bauer stopped it. Hellman for Mahovlic. And he's checked by Dillabo. Dillabo getting in front. He's checked by Armstrong. And now Armstrong with Stemkowski. Norma Hoblitz, too far. Now it's Semkowski taking a whack at it. Johnson covers the short side. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Boston Bruins, three. Toronto Maple Leafs, three. 6-14 remaining in the second period. That's Alan Stanley talking to the referee. Hard school. Stemkowski with Pappen and Pulford. Shock. Goldsworthy. Break. There's a shot. Bruins bring it back. Shock to Westfall. Was up there number 18. Right in front of the net. And Stanley. Clears it up to center ice. Joe Watson. Covered. Then gets it to Westfall. A long pass to Goldsworthy. There's his shot. That was high. Straight out over the blue line. Down the ice it goes, and Wojtowicz goes back for it. Number eight. A pass for Westfall. Goes all the way to Horton. Shot it into the Boston zone. Pulford after it. Stamkowski two. Back to Pulford out in front to Horton. Horton took his shot. It was knocked down by Watson and cleared out and down the ice. Allen Stanley after it. 
Goes behind the goal to Stemkowski, back to Stanley, to Mahavlich. Mahavlich coming up to center, over the line. He falls as he's dumped. Played out to Westfall. Westfall gets it up to Goldsworthy with Shock, and it's way too far. Shock tried to center it. It goes on to Horton's stick. Horton with Mahavlich and Stemkowski. Over the line, Stemkowski goes to the corner. He's ridden off by Wojtowicz. Mahavlich centered it, and it goes to the blue line, and it's outside. So it'll be called for a face-off outside the blue line. 4.46 remaining in the second period. Boston 3, Toronto Maple Leafs 3. There's a look at Frank Mahovlich, Bill, and uh, while he he hasn't been letting that high, hard shot go, he's certainly been throwing his weight around tonight. On the faceoff, it's Marat to Doak. Stopped by Larry Hillman. It gives Kelly a chance. Kelly takes his shot. Johnson stopped that. Marat is hit. Hillman keeps it in. Took his shot. Ellis goes after it. Then Kelly picks it up. Come behind the net, tried to center it, and Williams feeds the pass ahead at center ice, stopped by Hillman and deflected into the crowd who intercepted that pass. That was intended for number 21, Skip Creek. Tommy Williams, that's quite a line they've got out there, lots of speed. Tommy Williams got two goals in 40 seconds against Montreal the other night as the Bruins came through with a surprising win at the Forum. That's their second straight. Uh, talking with Fred Cusick, a souvenir there for somebody. Fred uh, Cusick, the Bruins broadcaster, say in Boston they consider tonight's game a four-pointer. And from the face-off, it goes down into the lead zone. That's Walton getting a chance now for the Leafs. Going over the line. A pass right through for Scott. He was Look at the muscle in there now as we watch this one again. Walton makes a fine play and Shaq is tripped up, going hard into the boards. They almost score as it comes out in front again. Shaq can't bang it home. And the bodies go in on top. Look at that. What a pile up. And Mike Walton has certainly been putting up some pretty good plays here in the second period. There we see it again in slow motion, videotape playback. As the Leafs failed to bang it home, Eddie Shack had the best opportunity with the puck lying loose in front of Eddie Johnson. You're right about that young Walton. Boy, he's got speed to burn. Up to the penalty to number 25, Doe. Two minutes for skipping. Time, 16.05. Play continues. Gary Doak gets a tripping penalty at 16.05. You were mentioning about this being a four-pointer, then how do the standings look at the moment, Brian? Well, Bill, uh, Chicago lost this afternoon after going 15 games without a loss, so they still have 70 points. New York picked up two today. They have 56. Montreal, 49. The Leafs with 47. They could catch Montreal, uh, depending on the outcome of tonight's action. And Detroit then in next with 45, and Boston in the basement, 37. But in Boston, they still have hope. Well, this game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. There's a look at the Boston bench and Eddie Johnson, the goaltender. I don't believe he's injured, Bill. It's no. more an equipment problem than anything. Uh, probably the toe strap on the front of his right pad. He hasn't... Uh, he hasn't had nearly <laughs> the number of collisions that Johnny Bauer has had to suffer through down there. And King Clancy, who is uh, substituting tonight for Punch Imlac, homesick in bed, is pacing back and forth. Clancy got out of the coaching business, you know. He had uh, a wealth of experience at it. He uh, coached the Leafs here from 53 to 56 after Joe Primo and right before Howie Meeker. Minor league coaching experience, too, and he's just a great fellow, that King Clancy. I asked him before the game if he was going to tell his players anything that Punch wouldn't tell them. He said, yeah, go up fast and come back faster, but he said Punch would say the same thing. There's 
three minutes and 55 seconds remaining in this second period. The referee's already explaining to King Clancy that the strap is broken and now they've got it fixed. And uh, Brian, just as a matter of fact, in this hockey game, I think both goalkeepers are really going to have to keep their heads up before this game is over, the way they're all piling around the nets. There'll be more collisions tonight, I think, than any other game this season so far. I believe you're right, Bill. They've, they've got their work cut out for them, too, because the shots are starting to fly a little higher now. The score is tied, 3-3. Boston, 3 Toronto, 3. There's Mahopoulos from the blue line, a shot. Walton gets the rebound right in front of the net for Shaq, and it's cleared out and down the ice. Mahopoulos going back for it. It's Mahopoulos, Pulford, Horton, Shaq, and Walton. Hofer down the far wing, shoots it into the Boston zone. Johnson knocking it off the boards, and Stewart gets it down the ice on a backhand. Havlitz back for it. Ryan from that tablet spell. Hofer for Shaq, up to Mahavlitz. Over the blue line, going in with Hofer. A shot at into his own zone. Tim Horton back for it. Two wall. Two fire for Mohammed. Conacher comes over the boards. Bobby Orr. Lagging the puck. To Marat. Marat shoots it down the ice. And Bauer to Stanley. 40 seconds left in the penalty to Doak. A pass for Shaq there to Cook. No out to Bobby Orr. Orr coming out. Back to Marat. Into the corner to Bobby Orr. Orr just drags the puck behind the net. Pass for Westfall. Westfall gets it out over the line. Stanley then to Conacher. Conacher let one go that's wide. He races after it. Ran into Marat. Bobby Orr. Shooting it off the board. Up for Goat outside. And Orr puts on quite a show out there. And there are two of the outstanding rookies in the league out there together. Brian Conacher, who scored the last leaf goal, and Bobby Orr. And we thought all along it might be a close race between these two for Rookie of the Year honors, but uh, there's no question Bobby Orr is going to win it. He led the first half balloting with 80 points. Conacher didn't even come second because Ed Van Imp came second with 42, Conacher with 36, Joe Watson got three points, and Peter Mahovlich won. But it's all Orr for Rookie of the Year honors. Keon Armstrong, Conacher, Martin, Dillabo, and McKenzie for the Bruins. A minute and 44 seconds remaining in the second period. It's a 3-3 tie. Stanley shot it into the corner. It goes behind the net. Joe Watson, number 14 in possession. To Pitt Martin. At the blue line, McKenzie is covered by Keon, and Horton goes back. To Stanley. Nowhere near Conacher. Pitt Martin shot it in, but McKenzie was at least 20 feet inside the blue line, so we'll have a face-off with a minute and 15 seconds remaining to play in the second period. Out of town score from Montreal, Boulogne from J.C. Tremblay, 17-27. It's Montreal 3, Detroit 1. On the face-off, here's Pitt Martin, a drive, Powers had that one come up off his arm onto his face. Kelly gets over the line, he's hooked from behind, and going to be a penalty to Joe Watson that time. He hooked Kelly, who broke away from him, and the Bruins run into another penalty. And once again, uh, we watched the instant playback briefly as Bauer, we, we tried to catch that shot that bounced off his equipment up along his cheek. He Shook that one off quite easily. He's uh, calmly standing down there, and he's perfectly all right. And there goes Joe Watson, another fine-looking rookie, toward the penalty box. Boy, the Bruins have been come up, coming up with some good young legs 
in the last couple of years. That Marat was a dandy last year, and he's playing a terrific hockey game tonight. Six penalties to the Boston Bruins so far. with a shot. Bauer stopped it. Well, we saw something unusual there, Bill, and that Bobby Orr lost his stick, kicked the puck over toward the Bruin bench and picked up another stick from one of his teammates and continued right on with the play. I don't believe uh, the stick he dropped was broken. Nobody stayed around to question it. Now that is a real oddity that uh, he would leave the one he that dropped and pick another one up at the bench, but if certainly the referee didn't see it. Detroit have scored Dean Prentice from Marshall at 18.54 of the second period. Montreal three, Detroit two. Romney faceoff, it's Horton now coming out for the Leafs. The Leafs have a man advantage. Horton at center ice was stopped by Orr and it goes Right down the ice again with 29 seconds remaining in this second period. Stanley to Conacher. He was hit by Stewart. The puck deflects into the corner. Or holding it there. Then Stewart and Conacher shoving one another. Well, Conacher seems to be a favorite target for the Boston Bruins. Stewart really... Uh, Gave it to him coming down the ice and then rammed into him again in the corner. Connick is a big fellow, of course, and uh, Stewart and Westfall have been doing a terrific job of penalty killing for the Bruins. They were put together a while back, and uh, these two veterans really know how to kill off the penalties. Faceoff is in the Boston zone to the right with 15 seconds remaining in this second period. Score tied 3-3. Keon facing off against Westfall. He got the draw, but it was cleared by the Bruins down the ice as Conacher seemed to spin Stewart around and knock him down. Stanley for Conacher. Stewart goes after him. And there goes the bell to end the second period. With the Leafs scoring twice in the second and the Bruins won as the Bruins had outscored the Leafs in the first period, two to one. And so the score at the end of the second period is the Boston Bruins three, the Toronto Maple Leafs three. Three tie, end of the second period, the Leafs and the Boston Bruins. King Clancy's behind the bench and it's kind of ironic and I want you to tell a little story. We're going to lead it in. King Clancy night, uh, many years prior to this, of course, the Leafs donned the green jerseys on St. Patrick's Day, and King was ushered onto the ice in a, uh, on a float. Now, while with the Vancouver Canucks later in your career, back in the late 70s, ironically, in the month of February, on a Valentine's Day night, I understand they had a pretty big night for you. Yeah, it was a classic, actually. Uh, uh, Hockey Night in Canada wanted to do something special, and they approached me in to see if I would do this uh, dinner and, uh, and we got into it and what happened basically is that uh, um, they had a limo pick us up and drive us onto the ice at the Vancouver Arena yeah. and uh, the limo pulls onto the ice and we get out of the car and they've got a chef there they got birds in cages. <laughs> they got violin playing. I don't know if that's when my uh, my marriage broke down or not, but it was a classic because I you wouldn't believe the, the kidding I got from the players around the league. That and knew this me. is all being taped was for taped an intermission and, feature for Hockey Night in Canada. And I guess it was a big hit. And one step my wife. And 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 some of the players afterwards. I'm sure you oh. got chided big oh, time they about went, that. The guys all over the the country. They were they were they were calling me and. I go into a city and they just said, shake. Unbelievable. <laughs>
they can just laugh. <laughs> and I'm sure they picked the right person to have to oh, do it with. Yes, indeed. Well, the Maple Leafs are tied with the Boston Bruins 3-3 because it's February the 18th, 1967. Leafs and Bruins. This is Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. We're going into the intermission studio at Maple Leaf Gardens. Ward Cornell is standing by with Larry Jeffrey. Set to start the final period. The score is tied. 3-3. Boston 3. Toronto Maple Leaf 3. Arch Grove, the referee, has called them the center ice. On the out-of-town scoreboard, Montreal is leading Detroit 3-2 as they get set to start their final period. And this afternoon... At at New York, it was the New York Rangers 4 and the Chicago Blackhawks 1. Well, I just got word here we've both been traded to California <laughs> for Phyllis Diller and Lassie. <laughs> on the face-off, it goes back to the blue line. It's Wojtowicz over on the wing to Marat, right on to Stemkowski's stick. Horton over to Pappen to Stanley, and Stanley was checked by Stewart. 43 seconds left in Joe Watson's penalty. A Boston defenseman who's in there, and the Leafs have a man advantage. West Stamkowski to Pappen. Over for Pulford, off the boards for Stamkowski, offside. You mentioned that game this afternoon, Bill. Harry Howell got one assist, and uh, he has 11 goals. Uh, personal high for him, 24 assists for 35 points, and that was the same point total as the least leading scorer, Dave Keon, coming into this game tonight, but Keon has a point, so he's moved out in front of Harry Hell. On the faceoff, is cleared down the ice, going back for it is Tappen, 21 seconds left in the penalty to Watson, Tappen trying to get away, he's hit by Stewart and knocked down, goes over to Marat. Marat lets his shot go, and Bauer caught it and throws it to Pulford. Leafs slowly coming up. Pulford over to Stamkowski. There's his shot off Wojtowicz. It goes to the blue line. Stanley. For Pappen. That's in the Boston defenseman as he returned to the ice after serving his penalty. Chopped that puck up into the box seats. Bobby Bond is out of action tonight and uh, Punch called Jim McKenney up from Rochester. McKenney started at Tulsa and uh, then went to Rochester and he's uh, up to the Leafs for the first time this season. It goes back to Gary Doak, number 25 of the Bruins, over to Bobby Orr or up to Hillman and Hillman shot it in offside as Keon was inside the blue line. The ice seems to be quite fast tonight. The teams have been taking advantage of it. And we have Keon Armstrong, Conacher, facing Busick, along with number 21, Skip Craig at center ice. Tommy Williams, number 11, on the right wing. Hellman and Pronovo on the defense. Gary Doak, Bobby Orr for the Boston Bruins. Craig is over at the Boston bench there, getting a new stick. Linesman Matt Pavlich calls him, and from the face-off, it goes over to Tornovo. Tornovo knocking it over the line. Bobby Orr is back. Orr behind the Bruin net. A pass for Craig. Craig coming out. Intercepted by Armstrong. Armstrong takes his shot. Johnson stopped it. Knocked down the ice by Boston, and Tornovo goes back to touch it. He does, and that is icing. And, Brian, I guess at this point now we can look at the NHL leaders. We can if I can find them. Here they are here. <laughs> Stan Makita with 76 points. Bobby Holland second place with 55. Allman also has 55. And let's see, Warham is in fourth spot with 54. And uh, Goyette has moved up with a couple of points today behind Warham. On the faceoff, Conacher getting right in there. He's covered by Williams. Oh, he could get his shot away. Orr brings it back. Honecker has broken his stick. Honecker trying to hold it against the boards. It's hit Bauer from the short side and Hillman. Ahead Armstrong. Up to Keon. Keon failed to get by Orr. Orr gives it to Williams. He's closing in back to Orr and he couldn't get his shot. Armstrong off the boards and out to center ice. Gary Doak at his own blue line for the Bruins. 
to Craig ahead to Busick, just tipping it into the lead zone, and Tornado goes back for it, number three. Williams keeping it in for the Bruins, not by Hellman. Hellman for Conacher. Tried to go through the defense, and it's cleared by Orr to Busick to Craig coming up over the line with Orr. And Keon was there, cleared it, but not out. Williams took a shot, Bauer stopped it. Ronovo for Conacher. Up to Armstrong, up his stick. Watson clearing it off the boys, and Conacher gulped it right to Armstrong. Armstrong, a long shot. Johnson caught it. Over to Ronnie Shock, number 23. On the left wing, Williams to Creek, at least to number 20, Ron Murphy, who's out there now. Into the corner, covered by Stanley. Murphy trying to center it. Loose. Holesworthy back to Watson. There's a shot. Bauer stopped and shot missed the rebound. Now, I'm waiting for Kelly and Ellis, and it was right on to Kelly's stick from Watson. The shot was there. Kelly goes after it, and it's Wojtowicz, number eight. The number 26, Bill Goldsworthy. Along with Shock and Murphy, they shoot it into the leaf zone, and Bauer stopped it and left it for Ellis. To Mahovlich. Goldsworthy kept it in. Mahovlich gets it out to Kelly. Off the boards for Mahovlich. There's his shot, and that goes high over the glass and just short of the end blues. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Faceoff is inside the blue line in Boston Territory. Walton with Pulford and Pappen. Dillabo with Martin and McKenzie. Doak and Marat. Martin up, stopped by Hillman. He puts one in. Johnson caught that over his head and it was going into the empty net. He had misjudged that, but then recovered. Otherwise, it was in the net. Happen. Clearing it along the boards. Mike Walton at center. A pass to Pulford. Breaking right in on goal. He shoots. Oh, shot wide with his backhand. Happen to Bruneville. His shot. Marat stopped it. Failed to get it out. Here's Pappen closing in. He shoots. Oh! Here it is on the instant playback as Pulford missed the open net. Walden battled for possession in the corner. And finally, it bounces three to Pappen, and he steps around Marat, and there's the shot. And the Leafs lead at four to three as Pappen comes through with a very big goal here in the third period with 15 minutes, 11 seconds left to play. Number 10 for Jim Pappen. That's the first time the Leafs have had the lead in this hockey game tonight. Hellman off the boards for Pulford, broken up by Orr, and he shot wide. On the goal, scored by number 18, Packer. Assist, number 3, Cronobo, and number 20, Pulford. The time, 4.49. Well, Mike Walton seems to spark that line when he's out there. Bobby Orr has been the outstanding player for the Bruins, and on that play on Eddie Johnson, Bill, where he caught that high lob off the stick of Hellman, and it almost went into the net. Even if he had not dropped the puck into the net, but brought his gloved hand back into the net, it would have been counted as a goal. Right, and that's the first time I've seen that happen in a long time. There's a shot right on Bauer from very close range. And he had actually misjudged it, but just got back in time. Horton was checked. Stanley now goes to safety, clears it around for Conacher, stopped, kept in by Woodowitz's shot. Stanley gets the rebound off the boards. To Keon. Off the boards for Conacher. He didn't see it. Wojtowicz over the line. Horton trying to get it. He does. He's given a jolt as he's covered against the boards. Keon back to Horton again. To Armstrong. For Keon. It's deflected to Wojtowicz. 
or let it go. Armstrong follows up. He hit over the line. Hand on a backhand. It goes all over the line, and Bobby Orr has a break with Williams. One man back. Here's Orr trying to cut in. Stanley got a piece of him. Goes to the board. Orr is given a jolt by Stanley and held there for a face off. Well, there's the classic battle of youth versus age. We mentioned earlier that both Stanley and Orr, who battled for possession there, will celebrate birthdays next month. Orr is 19th and Stanley 41st. And Bobby Orr is fucked. There is just about the same age as Alan Stanley. Stanley leaves the ice. The Bruins are making a change. There's another look at Bobby Orr. In, 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 in training camp last fall, when the rookie came up, he used to take quite a kidding from Johnny Busick and the boys, Bill. In fact, when they go out to play golf after practice, they asked Bobby if he wanted to come along and caddy for them. <laughs> Then they face off or with a backhand that's high, knocked down by Westfall. He lets one go. That's even higher. And his goes into the crowd. 13-40 remaining in the game. Four to three for the Maple Leafs. As a fan, caught that one one-handed. <laughs> Kelly facing off with shock. Bobby Orr flipped it into the corner. Larry Hillman, round on the boards for Mahovlich. Mahovlich, plenty to set up the Bruins in front of the relief defense. He's Jack Westfall, giving it to Murphy back to Westfall. Marcel Tonovo fails to get it out. Shock. Back by Papin, it goes to Wojtowicz. Over here to Shock. That's one goal. And into the corner. The Bruins all around the leaf goal. Happen couldn't get it out. I saw Cronimo. He shoots it down the ice. And that'll be icing against the Maple Leafs who are really high press, Brian. Boy, Clancy was doing a, a kind of a jig. I don't know whether it was an Irish jig or what behind the leaf bench there, exhorting those Toronto players to get the puck out of their own zone. And finally, they were able to, and uh, Shock and Orr were the two Boston players who came closest on the play with Shock doing some fine forechecking in the Leaf zone. Faceoff is in the Leaf zone to the right. Walton with Pulford and Tappan. Martin with Dillabo and McKenzie. It goes back to Horton. Horton off the boards, out to center ice. Dope. Checked by Walton. Walton going in alone. Takes a shot. Right to Fulford and saddled over top of the net. It's behind the goal. Into the corner. Goes back to Marat. He just shoots it down the ice. Stanley back for it. And he touches it and the Bruins are called for racing. Well, this has certainly been the finest game Mike Walton has played since uh, Punch Imlag brought him up from Rochester. Kind of tough on a rookie coming up uh, during a, a losing streak particularly and then finding his way onto a line. And then, of course, the pressure's on. The crowd expects him to do well. They've heard a lot about him. And it looks like he's settling down now and becoming the center that a lot of people think he can be in the match. He's Wojtowicz. Bob Wojtowicz to McKenzie. He shot it into the leaf zone. Bauer stopped it. Horton with it. Horton for Walton to Pulford. Over the line to Walton. Walton for Pulford, in the Jim Papin centered it for Walton. Stanley moves up and he fans on his shot. Honey McKenzie. To Bob Widowich. Up for Martin. Martin over the line, there's his shot and he gets the corner. Rebound came all the way to center. Now then, Marcel Pronovo. Poking it for Papin. And he's checked. Keon to Larry Hillman. And he just decides to shoot it down the ice. And that's over the red line. And that'll be icing call against Toronto Maple Leafs. 10.37 remaining in the game. Toronto Maple Leafs 4, Boston 3. And this game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto.
Flip Creek at center ice. Tommy Williams on the right wing. Johnny Busick on the left. Bobby Orr and Joe Watson on the defense for the Bruins. Keon Conniker, Armstrong, Hillman, and Fonovo. Bobby Orr kept the puck in for Boss in the leaf zone. I saw Fonovo. Right on a Bobby Orr stick. The shot is wide. Larry Hillman gets it out over the blue line. Watson shot it off. Conniker back in again. I saw Cronovo shoots it out to center right. Bobby Orr moves over the red line. Flicked it in. It hit Hillman. Hillman to Armstrong. Up for Keon. Keon tried to break through the defense and he was checked. Busick feeds Bobby Orr. Here he comes up the ice. Four. A long shot. Bauer stopped that on the pad and scoops it to Conniker. Around to Armstrong, got by him. Watson is shot. Power stop there. And Keon. Coming out himself. Up the center. With Armstrong. Over the line. Armstrong a backhand. Johnson stopped that. It rolls right in front of the net. Keon with it. Back to Hillman is shot. Back to Hillman. He's had it again with a shot. And Bobby Orr stopped that one by diving in front of him. Or that or what a defenseman he's turning out to be. He made two quick reflex saves, blocking shots there, off the stick of Hillman. Number four goes to the bench. That's been their most dangerous uh, aggregation out there. That line of uh, Craig, Busick, Tommy Williams is flying. Of course, or along the blue line. And there's Harry Sinden, the youngest coach in the NHL, behind the bench. And here's that shot by Hillman on the slow motion videotape. And I don't know how Orr got in there in time. Rodney face off. The puck is loose. Tipped down the ice. Shaq goes after with shock. There's a pair of 23s. Bob Wojtowicz covered by Kelly. It goes loose. Kelly. To Shaq over the line. Back for Kelly. Kelly getting a hold of it. Had to go back to center ice. Tipped it over to Stanley. And Stanley to Mahovlich. Back to Kelly. Kelly tried to center it, and his shack goes back, and two of them take him into the boards, including Ron Murphy, who gets it up here to Westfall, right on the Kelly stick. And to Eddie Shack, for Mahovlich, and Wojtowicz is there. Wojtowicz too far. Horton goes back in his own zone, shoots it off the board. Kelly flipping the puck into the Boston zone. 8.27 remaining as the Leafs make a change. Walton is now out of center ice. Marat over the Leafs. Right in the net behind Eddie Johnson. Best save of the year. Joe Marat, I believe, has been hurt back of the Boston goal. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Now Marat is up on the There's going to be a penalty to Shaq. Two minutes for hooking. Time 12.02. Well, Mahovlich was sure he had the insurance goal on Eddie Johnson. He saw it. It was a great save. Eddie Shack is penalized. Faceoff comes outside the Boston blue line. Eddie Shack in the penalty box. Puck goes back to Murphy, number 28. He's out there with Orr, Williams, Skip Creek, and Busick. Bruins have been dynamite tonight. When they've had a man advantage, they've scored three goals. Stanley shooting it down the ice. Toronto Maple Leafs lead 4-3. Here's the chance for Williams now. Over the line, a pass. In front, it goes to the boards. Connick clears it, but not out. It hit Colford, and Colford nearly had a breakaway, but it fell behind him. Skip Break is back there for it, number 21 of the Bruins to Bobby Orr. He's leading the four man rush rather slowly. He flips it in. Bauer caught it. And he decides to hold on if there's nobody around there to help him. You know, we were talking trade between periods, and there's been a lot of trade rumors going around about trade between Boston and Toronto. A lot of the, the people have been mentioning names like Busick, Oliver, and Green, 
Fulford, Shaq, Pappen, Douglas, Walton, you, you name them, they've all been talked about. I guess that deal is off now that Green is out for the year with cartilage torn in his knee, and Oliver's been benched for a couple of games, so his play has fallen off of late. I doubt very much if you'll see a trade, uh, at least until something drastic goes wrong with the Toronto club or they start throwing some new names to talk about in there. Well, I would imagine the teams in the NHL at the moment are at a disadvantage as far as trades are concerned when they have to protect only X number of players at the end of the year. So if you're going to get a pick with the players, they aren't going to do too, uh, be too valuable to you if you can only protect 11 and the goalkeeper to start with. On the faceoff, it's Stanley over to Pufford, and he just shoots it down the ice. There's 59 seconds left in Shaq's penalty. 6.54 remaining in the game, and it's Toronto 4, Boston 3, but the Bruins have a man advantage. Coming up the center with a long shot, Bauer caught it, to Pulford. Pulford is hit hard, and Busick comes up with the puck, back to Bobby Orr. Orr gets set, there's the shot, oh, and Bauer slid out and made the save. Back to Orr again to McKenzie. Over to Murphy. There goes his shot, and that's why It came right in front of Stanley, blocked it up, and down the ice. 21 seconds remaining in the penalty to Eddie Shack. Bobby Orr to center. There's his long shot. Bauer caught it, juggled it a couple of times to Pulford. Pulford is checked by Busick. It's back to Orr. There's his shot, and that was off Bauer's glove. Kelly gets it out. To Pulford. Pulford over the line. Shaq on the ice. Shaq took a shot. Pulford gets a hold of it. Going behind the net. Trying to center it. Hit the hook. Score! Well, the Leafs take some of the pressure off now as Pulford does a great job here. Shaq's shot hits Pulford, but he goes after it. Keeps digging around the open net. Here's the pass to Horton, and he bangs it home. It's a 5-3 hockey game. Toronto over Boston. Tim Horton scoring. That's his sixth of the season. Toronto made the lead five, Boston three. Seven, Assist number 20, Pulford. And number 23, Shaq. The time 14-13. 14-13 is the time of the goal by Horton from Pufford and Shaq. Wojtowicz off the boards, up to center ice. The goal's worthy to Shaq. Up over the line they go. Westfall trailing. Shaq checked by Koniker on the first try. Tried to center it again. Still has it, hit the side of the net. Larry Hillman to George Armstrong. To Conacher. Conacher flipped it over the line. It's, and Marcel Tronovo moved up and gulped it into the Boston zone. Marat. Missed the check from Armstrong. Marat behind the net with Shock, who comes up with it. To Marat. Right on a Hillman stick, and he flips it right back into the Boston zone. Bob Wojtowicz. With the Leafs leading 5-3 to three to Shock. Out over the blue line to Goldsworthy, right on to Marcel Pronovo's stick. He wrapped it right back to the Bruin player. Westfall tried to get away. Larry Hillman poked it. Picked off by Goldsworthy. Stopped, and Pulford has it. Pulford. With Keon over the line, closing in with Pappen, back to Keon, back to Pappen in the corner. He centered it. Shark clearing it around on the boards. Goldsworthy coming out now for Boston up to Westfall, shooting it over the line, and it's Bauer to Larry Hillman. Up for Pulford. He just shot it into the Boston zone, and Bobby Orr's there. Orr starts out. Up to center. Over the line offside is Skip Break, number 21, with 3.51 remaining in the game, and the Leafs leading 5-3. to three. It's Walt now with Pulford and Pappen, Stanley and Horton. 
break with Busick and Williams. Walton feeds Tappen for Pulford. Takes a long shot. That's off the target. Tappen to Walton. There's a backhand. It does and covered up on the short side. And it, the referee, Brian, lost sight of the puck. Johnson had held it long enough and they blew the whistle, even though Pulford did get it away. So we'll have a face-off in the Boston zone on the left. Right back to Papp and a shot. Pulford after it. Bobby Orr stopped that shot. Right on a skate. You ought to give him some consideration, at least for the Vezina Trophy, <laughs> that Bobby Orr, the way he's been blocking those shots tonight. If I remember correctly, we were discussing earlier in the season that Bobby Orr does not wear any socks underneath uh, on his feet in a skate. So anything that hits is hitting almost flesh. Here's a shot by Stanley, and Bobby Orr stops it again. Walton with Tappen and Pulford, Horton and Stanley. Toronto Maple Leafs lead 5-3 as Horton lets the backhand go that Williams intercepts. Back with Craig and Busick over the line. Busick cutting in front of the defense, lets his shot go on a screen, and it was wide of the net. Stanley then for Mike Walton. Walton was checked by Craig. Craig having difficulty. A weak shot behind the net. Busick comes out in front. Oh, and Howard slid out to make the save. Another shot. Stanley after it. Williams had him covered. Hofford right in front of his own net. Up to Walton. Walton with Papin. It takes the pass. Shot it across the goal mouth. Walton centered it and it's right under Watson's stick. Watson coming up to center ice. The pass to Williams over the line. Marcel Pronovo got a piece of it. Mike Walton streaks out of there. Coming up to center ice. Over the blue line. Trying to go around to the fence. Covered by Watson. And Mike Walton skates off the ice. Here's a chance for Bissett, but it was from one zone the, uh, to the other, from inside the blue line over the red line, and that's offside. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. We have two minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the game. Toronto 5, Boston 3. Bill Marat clearing it into the leap zone. Marcel Pronovo breaks it up, gets it up to Kelly, and Kelly tried to get away, goes after it again. He spun around by... Doak, a pass for Pitt Martin, left for Danny McKenzie, and he overskates it. Now he tries again over the blue line for Dillabo, stopped by Mahavlitz. Mahavlitz coming straight up the ice, trying to go through, and he was checked. Pitt Martin now for McKenzie, it goes over the red line. Marcel Pronovo didn't touch it first, McKenzie did, it goes for Shaq. Shaq can't get out. Martin off the boards for McKenzie with a minute and 29 seconds left. Then Eddie Shack has it handed to him. To Kelly. Kelly, Shack, and Mahavlich over the line. Kelly to the side. Centered it. Johnson knocked it back. Cleared off the board. Shack kept it in to Kelly. Kelly trying to get around Marat. Centered it. It comes to Mahavlich. A shot. Another try for Kelly to Mahavlich. Right to Eddie Shack. Here's Mahavlik with a shot. Kelly centers it right in flat. Mahavlik is dumped and the play is called anyway. Somebody knocked it down with a high stick. And we have 53 seconds remaining. Eddie Johnson must have been wondering where his defenseman went. He was getting absolutely no protection there for a good 30 seconds as the Leafs swarmed all around, particularly Mahavlik. Kelly and Shaq ready to fire it home, but they weren't able to penetrate. At least may have thought there was a penalty on the play, but there wasn't. It was actually the, re the referee blew the whistle because the puck was knocked down with a high stick. So Jim McKinney is coming out for the second time in the game tonight to play on the defense in place of Tim Horton. 
And it was Horton who scored the final leaf goal from Pulford and Shack at 14-13 of the final period. Now then, Stanley is replaced by Horton, so Horton did not leave the ice. So it's Horton and McKinney, Keon, Conacher, and Armstrong. Bobby Orr clearing it out and down the ice to center. Tim Horton goes back forward with 46 seconds remaining. A pass for McKinney to Keon. Takes a long shot. That is wide. It goes into the corner. Shock gives it to Watson. Watson is covered by Keon. Shock off the boards for Westfall. A pass for Murphy. Murphy gets his shot. Power stopped it to McKinney. Up for Keon. Keon can't get out. He falls. McKinney does. He's checked. Horton just flicks it off the boards. 12 seconds remaining. Back to Shock for... Westfall, it goes high, Conacher to Horton, Horton is knocked off, is skate, there goes the bell, the game is over. If the Leafs scoring two unanswered goals in the final period, Pathens 10th from Pronovo and Pulford at 4.49, Horton 6th of the year from Pulford and Shack at 14.13. So the final score of tonight's game Toronto Maple Leafs 5, the Boston Bruins 3. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the three stars of tonight's game as selected by Foster Hewitt. The first star, Bobby Orr. The second star, Mike Walton. And the third star, Alan Stanley. Foster, two youngsters and a veteran. Now, that's right. It was quite a hockey game. Uh, of course, the Leafs had to come from a two-goal deficit, and uh, that's quite a trick to do. But uh, I thought the best man on the ice, though, was Bobby Orr. Uh, he's uh, going to be a tremendous hockey player. In fact, he is a good hockey player, uh, uh, almost a great one at the moment. But uh, it's almost too, ex too much to expect that he is as good as he is at this stage of the game. But I thought he was a steady attacking individual at all times for the Bruins. He's the one that really kept them in there all the time. And that's certainly Mike Walton's best game. Oh, yes. Without a doubt. Uh, Walton played a great game, and uh, he could have had two or three goals in that play, the way he was sifting in. He was skating tonight, and uh, the timing was a bit out, of course, on the passes. But uh, I thought Walton was the best leaf beyond doubt. Uh, then you have to come to a, a real old war horse when you... Uh, Think of Alan Stanley. Uh, he was uh, he made some tremendous moves in that last period. I thought uh, that one check on Bobby Orr uh, might have made the difference of a, of a tie or a loss at that stage of the game. But Clancy, uh, but uh, Clancy kept Stanley out there quite a bit, well, and that was very important. He believes that life begins at 40. <laughs> Thank you very much, Foster. In just a moment, we'll have the complete statistics of tonight's game and the other game being played tonight. 